Revelation 6, verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Today we're going to look at why the white horse and rider is not the Antichrist. I believe the four horsemen are already here, and had been here since the first century when the seals were opened. The rider of the white horse is truly a spiritual entity, or at least a personification of a person. He has the reference as being male, the personal pronoun he that sat on him. I know the Antichrist will have a crown, but I am skeptical as to his conquering ability. This is what I found in Scripture, Revelation chapter 17, verse 12 through 13. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as of yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The horns do not seem to be conquered, but are willingly giving up their power and strength unto the beast. The scriptures bear this out, that they had not been conquered. Revelation chapter 17, verses 16 through 17. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Now think about it. For if the ten horns would have been conquered, they could not make the kingdom of the beast desolate and burn her with fire. Simple logic, isn't it? The definition to conquer or to prevail, its usage is, I conquer, am victorious, overcome, prevail, subdue. If the Antichrist is the rider on the white horse, he sure failed in overcoming the ten horns since they make his kingdom desolate and naked. Now let's give the credit to where the credit is due. The rider on the white horse has no name, but we know his game, and that is to go forth conquering and to conquer. He will subdue the nations wherever he shoots his arrows at. It is the judgment of God, and he is able to be victorious every time. Don't give the rider on the white horse upset by calling him the Antichrist. He is very much pro-God and pro-judgment. I am not going to be stupid by calling him anti-God when he's riding a white horse, instead of like the devil riding a demon horse painted white. I believe the seals have already been opened. Not going to be open, but they have already been open. It's just a matter of time before they manifest themselves. For instance, I can show you the work of the white horse and rider. I think he should be proud of his work to having constrained evil in the world by overcoming their powers of darkness. The fall of Rome is one good example. The most straightforward theory for Western Rome's collapse tends to fall on a string of military losses sustained against outside forces. From then on, no Roman emperor would ever again rule from a post in Italy, leading many to cite 476 AD as the year the Western Empire suffered its death blow. However, I don't have time to mention every conquered country since the seals have been opened. World War II was the war that thinned out many enemies of God. Hitler conquered nations. And then he himself. And Germany was also conquered, which was a good thing. Thank God for the white horse and rider for God's benevolence in conquering the evil empires. God is against ungodly nations. That is the purpose of the white horse and rider. I believe scripture bears it out. Daniel chapter 4, verse 35, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? 
I believe after wars, when the smoke settles and clears, the world becomes a better place, at least for a while. And then the world just might need another war just to adjust the powers of good and evil. America the Great has survived many years during evil conflicts. We can thank God for his white horse and rider for keeping us safe. Christians are like salt that preserve the world. As we grow in strength and numbers, our world will have more peace and no need for conquering spirits. However, when the rapture happens, all the Christians will be gone, and nations will crumble under the judgments of God. After the rapture of the church is when other seals that had not been fulfilled will be fulfilled. All of the judgments of God are righteous, and the best possible outcome will happen. Psalms 119 verse 39, For thy judgments are good. Psalms 119, verse 75. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. My last point is that the Antichrist will not arrive during the first seal. How do I know? It is a verse that many overlook. It is the beast that ascends out of the abyss, which is hell. Revelation 17, verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Revelation 11, verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. We find by studying the book of Revelation that the door of hell is open in the seventh seal on the first woe. Revelation chapter 9 verse 1, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now I don't believe anyone gets a free get out of hell card to play when they have died and were cast into hell. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, it says, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. The one that ascends out of hell, the Antichrist, will have to have had special circumstances that will enable him to ascend out of hell. A person that was alive and went into hell has a chance of coming out of hell in the same condition that he went in. Since death is the finality in which most all men have an appointment with, that is to die, then be judged, this person will have went alive into hell, and then later in the end of age, when the door is open, he will come forth, he will come out. Now don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned, for Cora is coming again, and in a later video, I will declare my findings in the Holy Writ about the Antichrist. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And I already gave you a clue who the son of perdition is. Now to those who have not trusted in Jesus, I would do so today. I would be prepared to escape prior to the wrath of God by the rapture of the church, when the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive shall meet the Lord in the air. Oh, what a great time that will be to meet Christ in the air, to be saved from what's coming upon the earth, the wrath of God. Who wants the judgment of God? Who wants to be judged? I don't. And you can be forgiven of all your sins and your trespasses. The judgment of God will pass over like they did the Israelites. Because Jesus is our Passover lamb. And judgment of death passed over them where the firstborn of Egypt died. Bow your heads and say this simple prayer with me. Dear God in heaven, forgive me of my sins. Be merciful to me, a sinner, for I have sinned. I know the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I realize that, and I want forgiveness. Oh, God, forgive me. And I just thank you, you can, on behalf of Jesus Christ who died on the cross, on the cross of Calvary for my sins and shed his blood and sent my sin away because he died for the sins of the world. 
and I now embrace it. I embrace Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. And I believe, now, I believe in the resurrection of Jesus, the Son of God. I believe God raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. And I believe it. And I trust in the resurrection that I too will be raised from the dead. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In his name I pray. Amen. This is Larry Zorro. See you later. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.